I am in this like education of myself right now with content, um, recognizing that there's so much content, um, being in love with, um, you know, as I just said, voices and hearing podcasts, especially in the audio version and audio form. Alex, what kind of content are you, is in your ears right now as you grow your big brand that you're oh, that's a great struggling to, to um, achieve here? Well, before I jump into that, I just want to say, and you know, we've known each other a while, and I've known a few of you and gotten a chance to meet you. But what I haven't ever shared with you is I actually spent a good chunk of my uh, childhood in China, and uh, I, I grew up and uh, spent my high school years in Taiwan. And moving in the middle of life, as you can imagine, those Jeez. formative years could be really tough. And I was lucky enough to run into some people there that really welcomed me and opened our arms and made the experience fantastic. Well, so, you know, as life goes on and I move back, you separate and, you know, you lose touch with people. But in this digital age, you get to connect. And I at last week was able to connect with somebody I hadn't seen in 34 years, basically. Wow. I hate to age myself, so Jeez. I'm an older man <laughs> if you're listening to this for the first time. I haven't been alive that long. But <laughs> yeah, <first>. right. Thank <laughs> you very much. I, I was waiting you, for that. I think they call that wise. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. But um, what was great about that, the uh, we, were, we decided to meet for Chinese New Year, apropos, since we hadn't seen each other. We met in China. Um, so last Sunday, last Saturday, Chinese New Year, we let and we met and we said we're going to get the families together. And the hour or two before that was just really a, a tremendous feeling, right? Like there's so much apprehension, you know, what, yeah. do, you know, am I, you know, then you start doing some self-reflection and, <laughs> but you get all these different, all these different feelings and all this excitement and all the, all of this is to say, that's the feeling I had before I came in here. Uh, and oh, I'm yes. so excited to be here <laughs> because it was such was a great a experience that I had reconnecting with them after 34 that's years. Awesome. So I'm excited awesome. to be Yay. here. So, well, <laughs> that's a long way to answer your question, but, um, um, so uh, I do listen to actually a lot of podcasts. I really enjoy the experience. Um, mostly what I listen to is a lot of creative things, uh, people talking about the creative prog prog uh, process. I mm -hmm. uh, listen to, uh, if I can name them, if I can name drop, sure. uh, Sam Jones off camera. Um, he d talks to a lot of directors, writers, TV producers, just about mm -hmm. how they get inspired, what keeps them inspired. Um, I listened to uh, Conan O'Brien a bunch. Um, his interesting new one, obviously, we all know Conan is a funny comedic guy, but bringing on different talents and talking about their creative process. So a, a lot of sort of uh, things that sort of stretch why you think the way you do, how do you use that? If it is what, you know, whatever your perspective in life is, it is what it is. How do you use that to, you know, further your, further everything around you? And that doesn't necessarily mean financial success mm -hmm. or any of those things. It's just how do you build those relationships and use that as, and really, you know, to, to grow. And, and, and so those are the couple things that off the top of my head, and there's a bunch more, um, that I can think of, but those are the two that I listen to consistently that I always go back to, um, yeah, I find like what I'm what I've noticed about it because I've I've made it sort of um, just a really important part of my life. I'm always listening to something in the car, or I'll take a walk with my dog, um, and I think in just trying to get to the end of of what it is that we're creating, what I have found is that you know when you seek out the education, you kind of are surrounding yourself with maybe a better thought, a better way of thinking, if it will. It's like, mm -hmm. like almost mm -hmm. like the positive guy in the room that you exactly. need. So it almost becomes, I don't want to say like a friend, but almost as if you are creating, and it almost sounded like you were saying that, like this extension of yourself, you know, of, of what else, you know, what, what else can I derive from, from all of it, you know? Are you, Stacey, into podcast listening or... Um, any content, because I, I know you're a learner. I know that about you. Well, of course. She's the girl of school. <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually, I do. I do yeah. listen to a lot of audiobooks with Audible, um, and then I do listen to some different podcasts. Um, Gary V. and I don't t necessarily go towards the re real estate type ones. I like the ones that just kind of more open up mindset, motivation, and confidence, and just trying to, you know, almost having that coach in my head the whole time, just to kind of keep me, you know, real estate's up and down. You got to have something that kind of keeps you moving forward That's so, so um so i tend to kind of go i tend to kind of go for those kind of um those kind anything that can help better myself and you know cool. be a better person so yeah i i see that in you in its entirety because you definitely <laughs> you definitely uh, put yourself in those situations yeah I networking know. groups and education yeah. and all that kind of stuff darren 
Hey, Clark. Carrie. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad that you're next to me. <laughs> I missed you. It's, it's to been too you long. Um, I went from seeing Darren like literally nearly every day at the gym, you know, and so he's my morning routine and just you know right. Darren has this sparkle and when you walk in the gym it's just like oh, Darren's here the world's okay you know yeah. um I tell everybody I say everybody needs a little dose of Darren that's what I say but I haven't seen him in a while because I don't go to that gym anymore so um I also miss you too because I get little tidbits little sign box little, little, signs, little, sound bites of what's going on and I'm like oh, I haven't heard from you. what's going on so but now glad we to get, be here today. now we get to and be I kind of had that same <laughs> anticipation coming in the day like oh what's going on What's it so, so i get that story okay. so. but you are good my friend about social media like you are one that is regularly producing little videos little darren clips i mean showing your stuff to the world how is it and what are the difficulties in getting your message out to the world um i heard a term recently and it was this that so many people look for likes instead of doing business and so you find yeah. that thing you post something go, oh is anyone like it anyone like it and that's ridiculous it's a waste it's a waste of time really yeah. but we're still human nature we put something out there you took the time to take the picture or make the video so you still want it to be appreciated and you think that yeah. there's some sort of validity into people doing that but that's not really the case um, for me I try to use it to let people know that I'm just someone who's here to serve Mm. And my job is to try to make people safer mm -hmm. <laughs> and to live, sure. self, live better. Um, and I try to just kind of give it little glimpses of me as I try to do that as well, whether it be to do you know, the actual tech, uh, text and, and with, the, with the photograph or with the videos and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it really, is it difficult for you to think about what to put out there? Like I find myself wanting to put out stuff and just, Maybe I don't even want to put it out as much as I'm saying. It's for me. It's it's almost a chore to figure out the words and right, like how to say it. And is it a chore for you, or is it become natural? And how did you get over that? <laughs> well, 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 going back Teach to us. going back to seeking likes, then you're put posting stuff out there, and you're like, wow, I wonder if this is gonna like. Wait a minute, that's not who my clients are. That's not like who my family is. But the fact is you just have to put out who you are yeah. and whoever you are and whatever it is you're trying to send out there. They'll, there's a niche for that. There's people who will feel that same way and will that message will resonate with them. And so you just put out whatever it is that you, you know, who you are and then let it be that and not be so concerned with the likes and with the, the accolades that come. Um, but then you will find that again because yeah. it will touch somebody's heart or touch someone's head or touch someone's path. And then, do you, you know, work on a schedule at all, or do you just post what you feel when you feel like it? Right now, I'm posting what I feel. I know there's people who have blocked out time, yeah, and they know the algorithms mm -hmm. and the best time to put this kind of post is at Tuesday at ten, and yeah. this kind of post is at four thirty <laughs> at five, and oh, people yeah. aren't there until lunchtime, so that's a bad time to put that in there. I mean, there's people so who crazy. do that. <laughs> I haven't delved into it that deep, but you know, so I'm, it's interesting because we're in such a polarized world, and so uh, we talk about at the you know at the business a bunch about half the traffic in social is negative and half is positive. So we always, our, our vision of things is always on the positive, yes. as you say, right. right? We don't delve into the negative, we don't get mm -hmm. into that, but I do say we're missing half the opportunity to, to communicate mm -hmm. to people, right? So we have talked about, and I mean, only in a very joking way, is do we create our own negative stories that we're comfortable with? You know, the band's really mad at us because we delivered stuff too early, you know, like that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I like right? that. But um, I think it's interesting so far, the couple questions, you know, with your posts and what we listen to is it's been very positive, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has sort of mentioned anything. You know, you're not doing something sort of elaborately deliberate and you're not listening to sort of divisive interest, you know, podcasts. So right, there's too much it's, negative out there. Yeah. Why listen to more, <laughs> add more to it? But what's hard is that it, because everything's so positive, it's not necessarily all real because people who are mm. looking at it mm. who might be having a bad day or whatever say their their life is always perfect. Mine sucks. Right. And so yeah. that's, that's of, really that's hard, hard about it. it. Yeah. For but sure. I, I, I do appreciate the, the posts that I see and the posts that I've shared up there that have been the failures. Everyone yeah. wants to post, this is my perfect life. But for those who are being transparent about what they're posting, this, mm -hmm. is, this is what's really happening in this business or mm -hmm. in this path that you're walking. Right. There's real people out there who's not so much looking for the appearance. You know, Everybody wants to look good, 
But if you're sharing the truth of the matter, is that will touch people's hearts too. And that's yeah, the yeah. If but you, you have to get it. Yeah, you have to not be afraid. Say it afraid. Right. right, right. Because well, otherwise, you can run people off from whatever you're trying to do, and you don't want to do that either. True, true. So it's I find I find it very hard to do it. So I have somebody who posts for me because <laughs> I, I don't know I what to it. post, and I don't want to offend someone. I don't want someone to think oh my gosh, she doesn't know what she's talking about or somebody in the same industry who says, that's not right. You know, I don't want to do that. And then um, when when I talk about my my passion piece, then I don't mind saying anything because it's going to attract people. So it's kind of a weird place to be. But business-wise, I don't want anybody to walk away. But uh, foundation-wise... It starts with the negative, and then you can see the positive. So it's kind of a weird mm. place. To I be. totally get that. That's that hot trend right now is posting the Instagram photo next to the actual reality. Yeah, picture. yeah, yeah. 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 That. And then the Tinder thing. one. Yeah, well, well that, that <laughs> that's was the Dolly Parton challenge. That's the Dolly Parton challenge, challenge where you, you show Some your picture really across all four social media platforms. But the other one is you actually <laughs> the po- the picture, the perfect picture, posted next to the actual reality right. before filters, before oh, everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. The camera angle. Yeah, I I, I've, I'm sorry, Stacey. Oh no. I was just going to say, I went to a social media class um, a few weeks ago. Um, I'm in another group of women, and um, one of them puts on this um, kind of a social media type class that teaches you how to do the scheduling and and whatnot. But she also talked about um, how the more real you are, even if it's stuff you don't even want to talk about, the psychological stuff, it, it relates to a lot of people who don't want to talk about that, but then they still see the real side of you and you tend to create fans that way because they see you in a different light. However, I have a hard time wanting to do that yeah. because yeah, I feel like it also creates maybe even like um, like you want to you want to have a little bit of a of a shield yeah. you know for yeah. yourself. But at the same time, you know, in today's society, really, you know, what gets people's business is to really understand you and, and really know who you are. Yeah. As, you know, emotionally, psychologically, all different ways. But I think a lot of times we've been, in, we've been, we grew up in a time where you don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Compared to, you know, a lot of people nowadays where they're like, you know, they post it all out there. And, right. And, but it's real. Like and, me or not. Yeah. Well, Google, I, Google it, knows everything. Right. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a hard time with that. And I'm trying to figure out how to kind of get, get over it. Well, that it all possible. comes down to fear. I yeah, mean, I was, absolutely. Yeah, I it's, it's mm-hmm. this, it's, it's this, and, and there's fear in everything. We all have fear. I, I was saying, uh, John and I were in, in watching, uh, you know, some videos in order to get kind of prepared for this. And I said this yesterday too, but we're watching these superstars and Oprah happens to be in the room and she's Oprah. <laughs> I mean, she's got to know she's Oprah, right? right? Like she is Oprah, like no matter what. <laughs> and she's sitting with Reese Witherspoon and, and some other actresses, Nicole Kidman's in the room and some other people. And she delves immediately into the fear of acting and how to perform like performance anxiety in the realm of all these people that are so much more professional speaking to Reese, who's been in like, you know, a hundred movies. And she makes the comment, you know, I asked Reese how many movies, Oh, it's been something like a hundred, you know, (laughs) and how Oprah felt really, you know, less than and and they're all looking at her like, did you not know you're Oprah? (laughs) (laughs) You know, like you, you're still Oprah, but it, is that human element in all of us. And I think that we've gone so far with all this social and, and you know, all everything that we're posting and all this stuff mm-hmm. that people are really wanting to hang on now to authenticity. And, and they're wanting to be authentic finally, because I think we're getting tired of it, but it's still, especially coming from the ego that in the real estate worlds that we come out of, right. where ego drives us, you're still sort of like, okay, I'll be a little honest, but mm-hmm. like, don't see me in, in its entirety. And that's, that's where you at, where you're at. But you, my dear, I'm talking about fear, have faced an immense amount of fear impersonal and we don't need to get into it you can if you want to i know you're pretty open but talk about the facts of facing that fear and how it changed and elevated your life well so i was diagnosed with ovarian cancer nine and a half years ago and the fear of not being at my son's bar mitzvah in three months or my daughter's high school graduation they graduated six months after i was diagnosed was immense yeah. but the fear of not being here was so intense that I couldn't 
deal with that fear. I had to find a positive, find a way to get past it. And I got hypnotized because oh, I knew that my brain would just go the wrong way mm-hmm. and I couldn't be positive in my treatment and in my hope of being places and at everything with that kind of monkey on my back. Yeah. So and you so got hypnotized because of your focus or you my, physically went and got it. Oh no, I actually went oh, okay. to I'm a hypnotist. Yeah. 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 Oh. No, I went to a hypnotist <laughs> and we, it was, it was three or four days in a row oh, Wow! and he gave me CDs wow. and different ones. One for when I was going through chemo one when I was needed mm. it just to mm. get the anxiety away. And because I mean, my palms are sweating even thinking about it yeah. because it's <clears throat> there's so much there's so much fear because you really don't know what what the future is going to be, and so that was really helpful. And I have now seen everybody graduate from high school, college, oh, grad God, school, awesome. and I married off a daughter last February. So congratulations! Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Great. So it's um, but I, I I don't know. I I think that conquering that fear or taking it beyond what it actually is is really helpful but it's not an easy thing to do and you need help and you've been able to take that fear and turn it into your passion project really i mean it really kind of became the essence of like your mission and where your you know where your heart goes yeah. every day when you wake up yeah totally it, where my heart goes every day so, but so- i do everything kind of with that in mind i mean i do my i'm a loan officer my my paying job and i do that with that in mind because at the end of the day it's all about your life and your lifestyle and um being able to be here for whatever it is and so i give people the truth as best i can like this is an option these are people to talk to this is you know i i may not be the answer but somebody else may be and i'm i can maybe direct you to that and so for that it's i i take myself kind of out of the picture it's not about me it's not about me. <laughs> Does I'm, it? I'm laughing because that's been my mantra for <coughs> the last couple of years. Okay. I'm circling back around to social media to to address what you're saying. I mean, that's a, a real concern. To be concerned about someone like it, like, yeah, that's not an issue right. <laughs> in comparison, perspective, and you know, where you are. Yeah. So, I'm wondering, though, like sometimes the gift, if if there is such a thing in it, is that you see life differently. Sometimes there is a gift. Oh, for sure. And maybe you would go back and change it. Maybe you wouldn't. I'm curious to say to see what you would say to that. What would I change it? Would you change um, it? Did it give you enough of a gift, or is it just you it, don't? It, you it, would it, never go back. There if you I, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it this way: I don't want a recurrence. Let's yeah. just um, right. go there. Yeah. Um, it did change my thinking. I there when I want to do something or I want something, I don't. I don't question it. I kind of just go after it and just apologize later because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. And even, you know, after Sunday with everything with Kobe Bryant and that (sighs) whole helicopter thing, you know, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And if you put everything off, um, we don't know if you're going to get to do it. At the same time, there are things that still scare me and I won't do them or I get anxious about them and I got to go back to the breathing stuff. And Mm. because I, I'm still afraid of, some of the same things I was afraid of before, but it it just allows, I guess it gives me a confidence that I can just do things. And like sometimes when people get upset, like over their loan, let's go back to that little world. And I think, you know what? It's a day, yeah. you know, yes. tomorrow right. it will yes. be here yes. too. And things yeah. will all work out. It's a day. It's not a life threatening you know yeah anything anything but it's still fear right that's what it is fear it. it's yeah. all about fear and fear is such an <sighs> impassionate driver in so many ways it can i was having this conversation with my son this morning i mean it can paralyze you yes mm-hmm. and you and and i just analogize it by saying you know it's a paralysis but you need to go to physical therapy mm-hmm. so you need to there is a way it's, out of it but you need to do the steps in the physical therapy and it's it hurts and it's hard and it's a struggle but when you get on the other side you can go back and go okay i did that right so people who are, are passionate people who are seeking success <clears throat> or even oprah the fear hits but you do it anyway. You, do it you anyway. go do it anyway. You know. That's and, and some people can, and some people can't, that's and that's good. where the challenge is. Because when it, when you let the fear take over, 
it's, it's it can be devastating. Sure. And so um, I I I want to find a way to help people to get beyond that. Like when that fear hits, like some people can just go, okay, I don't care about it. I'm going to move forward. And some people just mm-hmm. you know sit and and wallow in it. How do you get out of that piece? Like I don't I don't find know. your I, passion. I think I was going to ask <laughs> this. I was going to ask this one next to me. <laughs> yeah. Who's, who's right idea. in the who's my happy place. 30, year, 30 <laughs> minutes to an hour? Yes, yeah, yeah. you can ask yeah. my wife. So yeah. he takes a shower. Follow but, up. I mean, follow you're up in, that. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> you don't I'm have to follow it up. But, you, but you're in the thick of creating a business um, <clears throat> that has a lot of layers to it. Yeah. And I might have brought this up when you came in, but answer that question too. I mean, what do you do right now when fear knocks at your door? Um, how do you handle that? And What's it like in in the in the flesh? Yeah, I mean, a lot of you know, as you've started businesses, um, every day is a lot of up and downs. Throughout the day, it's like not day yeah. by day, but it's hour by hour. So, <laughs> we'll have a great meeting or a great like collaboration session or some, you know, sell some shirts and happy. And then the next hour, you know, something doesn't go right or or I'm overthinking something too much, and you're you're more down on yourself. So it's just having that. I think for me, a huge word is resilience. Um, mm. I think in life and mm. business, whatever it is, being able to be resilient and bounce back, um, no matter what happens is, is huge. As far as how I do that, um, I've kind of learned to, to do some things. I'm still working on stuff. Sure. Actually, you mentioned something I do take, uh, do take walks with my dog mm. that helps just to clear my brain. Cause sometimes you're in the weeds so much, mm-hmm. um, you're so focused zero day and it's going to take a break, block out some time and think more kind of long term more overarching than kind of day to day hour by hour so right. um looking yeah things that are kind of help with like i don't know meditation if any of you do that but um just kind of looking into different stuff to kind of take take breaks during the day to or else you know it's, it's a lot or it can it can definitely be like daunting if you're just in it all the time and in business and life, I mean, one thing I use is doing nothing is a choice. Yes. So right. that is an action. So you can yeah. choose that as an action or you can yeah. try something and do something. And even if it's small, um, even if it's just a token, mm-hmm. moving forward, because you're really only moving forward or backwards. There is no middle ground. Mm-hmm. So and I, I use that not only in business, but in everything I do, really. Yeah. It's just, and even if I have no idea what to do and it's just, you know, hey, I'm going to go sweep that or you know, do that. Yeah, it's yeah. something, right? Something. right. Yeah, that yeah. affects, right. you know, something around hopefully the topic at least, but even if it's just, you know, preparing to do something. So I need to, I need these assets or tools. I'm just going to get that. I'm not mm-hmm. making any decision. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to gather. Just and that's something. something. Yeah, Movement is life. Motion. Movement is life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Darren, yeah. in your world, right? It's, mm-hmm. you know, trying to do that extra Movement something. Uh-huh. It's just got to move forward, right? Or do something. Okay. Okay. That. It's interesting. Uh, Lauren, my sister, who, by the way, you should call about meditation. She's oh. unbelievable. Good plug there. Yeah. No, yeah, really. Yeah. No, that's I've heard true. Good things. It's that's, true. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. true. Okay. She's we'll gifted. Do. It's it's unbelievable. Lauren, I mean, I'm gonna call you. Lauren, he's calling. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she's really bright. My sister and another plug. <laughs> um, but she was saying we were talking about being in action, and I think for those of us that are in business, like we we know we need to be in action. We sometimes put this pressure to be in action. Wait, I didn't get anything. I didn't get what I needed to get accomplished today. But she said something so brilliant that I have to repeat it. And I'm going to give you the kudos here, okay? (laughs) Which is there is something about reflection that gets overlooked. And I think that's where you were kind of going with that Mm -hmm. by saying just sweeping. It's, It's, hey, I need to take a step back. I'm going to reflect upon where I'm at. You know, maybe reset myself if that's what I need to do by taking a walk. But we can't be in action all the time. Was her point? Mm. You, you, if you can't. I mean, you're in action, but right. part of that is reflecting. It, which yeah. I guess now that you're saying, well, it's a choice as well. Um, and you, you gotta sometimes look inside from from the outside and not yeah, be so yeah. paralyzed by your internal. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have a couple. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a soft rule, but I usually don't answer emails or texts without three or five minutes. And depending on, so I know people, and actually I work with some people that are very efficient and quite effective. But they don't let anything sit, right? You answer, you send them something. Uh, in. That's how but I, I, I find. But it can be a little. Well, I find that you're much. reacting to something that's not really the point of yeah. the matter because you're mm-hmm. not really seeing what was trying to be conveyed and stuff. So I, I yeah. usually try to take a pause and. 
you know, in this day and age, you know, you text somebody, you know, text immediately back, Reactive. and it's like, what's wrong? Yeah. 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 But, you know, and obviously, Reactive. you know, uh, yeah. you know, something from my wife, go pick a milk, yes, is an easy one, right? You know, but, um, but on, on, you know, things that have some weight to them is I actually purposely pause and make sure that I'm That's good. getting the intent that was supposed to and I'm responding, you know, in the right way to your point. So yeah. I, I, I do great. take that point. I, I've started, I've started to not take us, you know, t put someone on hold. If my phone rings, I'm going to stick with the person that I'm talking mm. to um, and then go back and call the other, other person, person, unless it's my mom or my husband, or my sure. kids, although <laughs> one of them just texted me or called me while we've been in here. But, but you know, those people, you have yeah. to take those calls sometimes and people understand that, but they also want your full attention mm -hmm. when they're talking to you. And I'd rather give them my full attention or else I don't remember what the conversation because there's too many people throughout the day yeah and so like your sister was saying that you have to reflect i think that's the shower or when i'm yep. driving yeah. in the car when yep. i can because i can go back and think oh wait i didn't i didn't do that or i didn't think I, here's yeah. another idea or whatever and it's way easier because there's so much coming at us yeah. all yes. the time. It's a lot. Yeah, it's back day. to that sensory deprivation. Yeah. It's important. I just wanted to jump back. You're talking about authenticity and you start jumping. Yeah. If that's okay, you can kick me under the table if you know. <laughs> um, quiet, quiet, sir. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you had mentioned being authentic and, you know, where we are sort of now basically, you know, two decades into this digital, you know, social media experiment that we're all on, this whole planet's on, mm -hmm. is I, I think about this a lot and I've had conversations with a lot of people about it. I, I think we're actually coming to an inflection point where, and we'll see, is that the idea of creating a completely dis separate persona online mm. is actually maybe valuable and an interesting exercise and if anybody's ever seen ready player one i know it's a kid's movie mm -hmm. but you know we we went through this projecting and then it's right now we're in this phase of authenticity but it does leave sort of an openness and and then also it actually closes down i mean is it okay to fantasize and be something that i'm not and why can't i do that in social and what if that was a completely dis separate persona and long as that persona was authentic to who it was also. I think, you know, where you get mixed messages, that gets strange and, you know, what are you really trying to be? But, um, you know, right now we're in, in, you know, particularly with kids and everything, we're in a world that social media was supposed to be, the promise was our extension of us, right? right. And, and opening and democratization that we're all gonna share ideas, but social media is an algorithm and how these work is right. it, you have to have filters, right? <laughs> and it creates, so, what's happening and you see with kids and it's starting all this confusion is they're coming online for the first time well i as a child or any of us we want to be fed stuff we're interested in so you start filtering mm. so then it questions well then who are you i need to create the filters so that i get fed stuff that i want uh. um so you see a lot of actually kids confusing you know why i and i don't want to get too crazy into this the genders and things well i would i categorize myself as one thing and the feed I was getting from the social world didn't resonate with me, so I must not be that thing. Uh, I must be something uh, different. Huh. That's so interesting. we're at a point where social media is actually coming back to us and telling us who we are, yeah. which then brings us to the point is why can't I be multiple people or multiple things? Or if, if that's what's gonna happen and I wanna explore other sides of my creative self, then I will be other things online. Yeah. So. The other concern though is if, yeah. if the information that they're receiving, them, yeah. us, right. was truthful and on point, well, that's great. What, but there's so truth. much manipulation <laughs> of the information that yeah, you're getting that you don't point. even know if that's you know, reaching the core right. or is it creating something different? You know? So that's a concern as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And is and that's it why creating can... something different that makes you uncomfortable and against what you know who you feel you are and then you don't know who you are and then there's confusion and then that goes back to all that fear and all that stuff again so but i hate that all you talk people right i mean well, we all yeah. have yeah. interests so, why, so exploring that, that on, on social well, is just an interesting thing mm -hmm. i think that's so. why there's different types of social media outlets too mm -hmm. like tiktok is i mean i go on there just to get a good laugh or right. whatever and i mean it's definitely for i mean it seems like it's more to tailored towards the younger generation mm -hmm. but I mean, I'll sit there for hours just flipping through videos of cats and I don't know something fun, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, but it's but most Mindless. for the most part it's very positive, mm -hmm. and so that's why I kind of like you know going through all that kind of stuff. But then you also have Instagram. Instagram's primarily you know it's all pictures for the mm -hmm. most part, and it's in video, but it's mostly 
I think some people might change their persona on Instagram mm-hmm. sure. m- yeah. more than I even think on Facebook because Facebook tends to be kind of a little bit mm-hmm. more personal. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also there's trying, you know, businesses, us, you know, as businesses are trying to get into a brand those message. type of yeah. um, things. So yeah. it's like you're a person, you're a business, you're, you're trying to be another person, you're trying to be, you know, all these different things. And I think it gets, it, it's just, luckily, there are different types of social media out there to kind of tailor towards what you want, as long as it is authentic, I mean, for the most part, and mm-hmm. not trying to trying to sway people in a negative way or in a false way, I guess, personally. Yeah. That's why, exactly the point, why <laughs> we can be different things. Why can't I, you know, be a persona online that was the basketball player that I never was and follow all those things <laughs> yeah. and not have it be my persona that's LinkedIn, right? Because it's authentic to a certain side of me and I want to explore that but have you seen (laughs) don't fuck with cats No, what is you no. need to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are we, have you are seen we allowed it? to drop the F-bomb but on this podcast? What is that? <laughs> it's Carrie's podcast. We drop so whatever. He can, about he can, I wanted to take my headphones, he too. Did like, did did you just say that? It's the name of the show. I didn't name it. Where is that? I've never it's heard of it. It's a Netflix documentary. It's really? Cats, but, yeah. It's F with a little star in it, C-K. And I said it right. And he will just edit right through it. It's okay. To know me is to know I swear, buddies. That's the way it goes. But that is what it's <laughs> called. Awesome. But the whole point of it, the whole premise of it, and it, it's a murder mystery. You have to see it's really interesting. But is this, it's a documentary, yeah. Mm. But this woman decides that she wants to be somebody else online. She's got this very, like, she actually lives in Vegas, but she's got this very kind of ordinary life. She's a tech girl. She's in technology mm. all the time. And, like, in the back room. It's just like this seems like a boring mundane life and she's kind of got this eccentric personality she claims to be a nerd she doesn't look like a nerd but she goes online and she creates this entire persona on purpose because she needs this outlet Hmm. and through it she finds some other weirdos and you know that's a whole other story story, but it's it it is it's it's a test of kind of what you're Hmm. saying and there's a lot of people out there that are doing it and she was like completely a different person i mean she had a different you know different name different picture but all she kinds also of had things. authority online yeah. that she didn't have <laughs> she like did. she was that's like true. a total different, oh. yes. yeah, that's a different like people saw her as like a go-to figure where i don't necessarily think she was that kind of person in real life it was huh. kind of giving her the confidence um and it was a positive and a negative but yeah. i mean especially in that documentary but it is it did kind of give her a different confidence that's because right. you, there wasn't a name there wasn't I mean, it's kind of, unfortunately, I mean, that's some, red, like, like, Reddit can be like that, too. And it can be a positive, and it can be a negative. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. I guess it's just, it's... it's, it's in, you'll find it interesting, just that. having said that. It's 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 a little, it's a little out there. I mean, it's true. It's a true story. Oh. Um, so it's crazy what, hmm. what happens. It's crazy. But it, it is the whole essence of that, that there's so many people, albeit they're either lonely or they want they just want a taste of something different for whatever reason it is that are going online creating a completely different presence in order to have a different social outlet that is completely contrary or just a little bit different than what you would expect otherwise and they just go on as that person it's really it was as long really, as it's not malicious i mean right. that's, kind of, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah but unfortunately there are people that do go I mean, malicious, that's what is the right? pros that's what, and cons exist right. in exactly every, right. in, every, in every space I mean, that's, that's what artists have been doing for centuries i mean sure. just reason i mean david bowie had multiple personalities yes. i mean we can talk about a lot of people but garth you know, brooks yeah right <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a, that wasn't a good personality <laughs> <laughs> i love it Okay, so some of us are older than others. Um, some are the oldest. Some are the oldest. <laughs> no, it might be me. It might be me. It might be me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you were going, okay, I'll start with Darren. I guess if it's me. you were gonna, if, <laughs> if the if the Darren today were to go back to the Darren of yesterday, um, what advice would you give yourself? What advice would you give your younger self that maybe? It's a good question. It is a good question. It really is. Um, it's hard. It, it, it it's is. really hard. It is it, hard. It, it is. I'll go back to a conversation we had before about fear and, and not to have that fear paralyze you. The analysis by paralysis, as you're saying, um, that would probably be the, the, that would be probably the main thing. The fear. Going back to that conversation, fear kind of hits me at times. But as we both said, that the mantra of it not being about me, it's easy for me to do the thing that I don't want to do or that fear that I'm frightened of. 
if it's for you or if it's for my child, if it's for my family, if it's for my clients. But that thing that's, oh, that's just for me. Well, okay, I'll get to that. <laughs> oh, sorry, my back to But so, <laughs> but that, but I was, yeah, but I was, I was trying to, just, need a yeah, yeah, after this. yeah, just trying to get into that posture of kind of you know, being diminutive when things about me. But that would be the thing that I would tell myself is don't let, don't let fear stifle you. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is I've always been one for being in the moment and really appreciating somehow early on I kind of got a sense of that even I can remember my preteen years at this moment's important whatever we're doing mm -hmm. so I've, ne I've mm -hmm. always been good at that what the, the thing that I would tell myself when I look back is I've also always charged forward and left those things behind so this moment's great and when this moment's over it's gone uh, right. With no attachment. To With it. no uh, deeper attachment. Yes, and we but, can get into all sorts of psychological reasons why that exists. But <laughs> thanks, Mom. Um, <laughs> but um, It's better than I, what I said yesterday about mine. <laughs> no, but I think being able to stay connected and to those things and, and bring them with you. And, and so I've actually spent probably the last five years spending a lot more time reconnecting with people mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, hence the earlier story of somebody hadn't seen in 38 years, um, you know, and, and sort of those are valuable and, and staying those connected. And it doesn't have to be just for networking ideas right. or anything. It is part of who you are and it makes mm -hmm. you you. Yeah. And being having that available to you, even emotionally or somehow sensory um, and keeping that available is super important. So I would tell myself to keep those connections one way or another and, and value them. Yeah. That's good. Hey. Um, well, part of what I would say to myself is to be true to myself mm. and not take on something that I really don't feel is right um, out of fear, which I'm back to that. Um, and also to understand that it's that when I was younger and things didn't work out, I was always in tears. And to understand that I have a backbone, I have a right, I'm worthy, and if it's not right for me, it's okay, and I can walk away, right. and that's okay. It's not like I'm I'm um, known by any one specific thing. I'm known for me, and if I and staying true to yourself, and knowing yourself is huge. Um, letting it, you know, paralyze you is is a different story. But at least when you move forward and if it's something that you really don't think is right for you then don't do it or something that you really believe is right for you and nobody right. else you know that you you know your parents or whoever that you look up to says no power forward mm. um, do it anyway because mm -hmm. I think that there's regret over things that you didn't do I could have done yeah, right. or didn't do the way that I I wanted to do and I still would have been okay, and I still would have been successful, and I still would have had whatever it is. Um, and also, you don't have to be like everyone else. You don't have to mm. live up to what they've done. You don't have to go the path that they went. That That's a huge thing, and I'm, I'm kind of saying that because I'm t kind of telling my kids this now, but I also know it much more for myself than I did. And. I wish I could have could go back and and really kind of visit that. Mm -hmm. some, sometimes you have to go through the process to get to this right. point. Right, and that's and why. I and I too try to teach my daughter. No, there's no need to be afraid. But she yeah. has to go through a process yeah. to, to get to that point of understanding her own confidence, and her own path. Sure. And that's a bummer. Yeah. My dad used to say all the time, "I wish that y I you could have known me when I was you know in my 20s and 30s because I was a lot more fun and it was a lot different than when I was in my 70s or whatever." And that's true. You know we. We are different than we were then, mm. and, and because of all the experiences that we've had. And if we didn't have those experiences, we wouldn't be who we are today. So it's like a lot to think about. But I think at the end of the day, to be true to yourself and know yourself enough to to live, to move forward based on that is really important. Yeah. Youth I'm, I'm, is wasted curious. on the young, right? I was yeah. just, I was just <laughs> saying yes. that. I'm, yeah. I'm I, I wouldn't change my path to get to this point. I wonder if anyone else would like have, I could mm. change my life. Now, uh, to get to this point, you had to go through that, and I'm okay with it. You know, if I was with my mindset now, with my view of life now, I wouldn't have done those same things right. today. But to get here and to be able yeah. to, you know, to know that I've right. overcome it or survived it yeah. or learned from it and can share, it, then it has served. It has served a purpose. It has served a purpose. Yeah. I was listening to this like amazing podcast, which I'll send to some of you that I think would be interested in, and. Um, I've been talking about this Allison Bird. She's um, she's amazing. 
um, she's very powerful and she was talking about how she came to be. Look, look her up, she's an interesting, she's an interesting character, very, very uh, brilliant speaker, an orator, if you will. And um, she said something about, if you really knew me, you would know that I, which is out of the chicken soup for the, for the soul mm -hmm. books. Um, so I wanna go around the table and have everyone, I'll start with Leon. Oh, man. Um, it's a hard question, but it's the essence of what we're trying to do here is come to authenticity. And so sometimes it's nice to hear about why you are and who you are. So if you really knew me, you would know that I... Starting with me on this one? <laughs> she goes, someone's got more experience in life first. Than me. Start with the young. Okay. We'll start with the youth. Um, <laughs> I guess... <laughs> I guess if you really knew me, you know that um, while I definitely am ambitious and a go-getter, I'm definitely, there's a lot of, like we talked about earlier, a lot of like fear there that creeps in, you know, like am I am I doing the right thing? Did I pick the right thing? And it, and it creeps in quite a bit. And uh, yeah, it can be scary at times, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I think what like, I've always uh, looked up to people like Alex, like Darren, like all of you. And it's been really important to have mentors and people who have been there before for me. Because um, it's good to, um, I've always found that it's really helpful and good to learn from people. And so since I was, and most importantly, my, my dad, who's um, been an entrepreneur and a very selfless person, I've always looked up to. And so they all taught me from a young age. Um, and it didn't really hit me until probably like, right, like after college, but still from a, a young age to always like go after what I believed in and not just follow a path. And I knew right away that the corporate world's like nine to five job just wasn't just wasn't for me. And so every now and then though, like I'm 31 now, I'll look back and be like, I know it sounds out to you guys, but <laughs> I'll look back and be like, should I be working at like Battle. an AT and T or something like that and working up the ladder? Or, but then I'm right after that. I tell myself like, there's no way I could have done that. You know, this is the path I want to do. I want to make a difference. I want to be an entrepreneur. Um, so I think it's that stuff creeps in, but I just have to like, you have to be true to yourself at the end of the day, and um, go after what you want and what you believe in, and don't be deterred. So um, I think that would be mine. Stacy. It's funny, I have the exact same feeling, uh, same thoughts in my head that creep in sometimes, just because in real estate it's so up and down, mm. and I've put so much of my time and years into it that, yeah, yeah it'll creep in like, should I be looking for a full-time, something that's <laughs> like more steady and something that's for sure, or do I just, you know, keep going and, and take the, and, you know, just do what I do and yeah. you know that I do what I do well. Um, I was in commercial real estate before this, but instead of going to something steady, I jumped in. <laughs> More risk. More risk. Yeah. More risk. Yeah. Let's make this tougher on myself. <laughs> but Resilience is your word, right? Resilience? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there That'll you build go. that up for Every sure. Every day I tell yeah. myself. But I guess, I mean, the people that know me the best, I mean, I guess if you really knew me, um, I, I'm not as much of a risk taker as I wish I would be. I think fear has really come into play a whole lot in my life, and I think it's been, unfortunately, a it stopped me from doing a lot of things I feel like I should do, as well as, like, my husband always tells me, you need to be different. You need to set yourself apart. And I'm so used to trying to be, you know, safe mm -hmm. and trying to get away from trying to be safe is, is really hard for me, and I don't, I don't know why, but it, it, but it is. Um, but, yeah, I mean... I love what I do. I love helping people, mm. um, you know, find homes, and, you know, and apartments or homes. Um, but, but I do try to figure out if I could ever, I wonder if I could get out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. <laughs> and finally put myself out there and maybe That's do something one. completely different and be, and do the risk stuff that I never did before. Cause it would have probably, it might've put me in a different path. I'm, I love where I'm at right now. And I probably wouldn't be in Dallas. I probably wouldn't be married. Mm. And, you know, it, it, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, I mean, even from college, I mean, I had, I didn't take the risk of doing an internship in Philadelphia that came and fell in my lap. But I was afraid because I've mm. never been alone before and 
off at 20 years old <laughs> doing something. So, but at the same time, I'm thankful for where I'm at right now, and I'm thankful for where my life has come. So that's awesome. I guess that's it. <laughs> Julie, if you really knew me, you would know that I. I don't know if you, if you really knew me, you would know that I'm, well, people that know me know I'm all about my family, and I would be just as happy to be with my family as anybody, um, but I also like to have a lot, I have a lot of friends, and I, and it's important to me um, to collect them and to stay connected. I really stay, like to stay connected, and Facebook and stuff has really helped do that, mm -hmm. which is, I, I love that part. <clears throat> but I also have these anxieties. Like I, I, I've tried to explain this to somebody, but I, I don't talk about it very much. But my fear is security and and um, safety and things like that. And so, if you really knew me, you'd, and you knew what was going on in my head, you'd sometimes go, "I can't believe that's what really what goes on in your head." But <laughs> because what what I, I I try to put it away or whatever, maybe the hypnotism helped that a little bit. Huh. Um, I, I, I run on fear and anxiety too, mm -hmm. and um, if you really knew me, you would know that, but I don't let people know about it very much. Mm. Or let everybody know now. Want to look fine <laughs> out. Okay, the truth is out. The strength is gone, but you know. But, but you do it anyway. <laughs> but I do. And it's but the common thread. Anyway. Yeah. It's the common thread on every single human being, and it, it, I just think. Um, we all need to remember that like again oprah was afraid and it, i just like you know it just boggles my mind you think that you get over it <laughs> at some somebody. point don't you mm -hmm. i always think too that um i'm always still even though my dad's been gone for 10 years i still want him i, I still want his approval mm -hmm. and so i still do things knowing how he would feel about it and so um i carry that with me all the time mm -hmm. and so if you really knew me, you'd know that that's part of me. And so that's really, I guess that's Insightful. really what I would tell you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you really knew me, you'd know exactly why I co-founded a record label and a record press, is I'm a left, left brain person and a right brain life. Um, and I'm very happy to do that. But in, in general, I'm always working towards the creative side of things. And so, uh, you know, you come out of school and you're going to do and i started on wall street and that was a horrible mess because they were they didn't want any left brain at all um so luckily i got fired pretty quickly um, <laughs> um but even through I, I think on one hand that's what's made me successful in the things i've done i've always brought some sort of creative different perspective to even working in some of the most uh, sort of buttoned up retail worlds and you know retail mm. things in the world and always sell things in the world um, you know, working for DFS, part of LVMH, they're not really, though they have a lot of creative outlets, they were not looking for that from me. I was not the creative director of uh, Fendi or Carl Lagerfeld. <laughs> um, so, but, so if you really knew me, I, I would, I'm definitely a left brain guy w living in a right brain world. Um, so, not unhappy about it, just, so I'm always looking for that creative so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was at Merrill Lynch for two weeks, so, <laughs> like, I knew right away this wasn't for me, and oh, I was just like, nope. Ten yeah. Weeks. yeah. <laughs> At least you knew. Yeah. yeah. And that was fast too. Yeah. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. But That's, they right. don't know you. That's pretty cool. If it's if, all there. <laughs> if you really knew me, um, my life has been a lot of things. I, I've been a bodybuilder, I've been a fighter, I'm still a combative instructor. Um, I've been a biker boy. Um, I, I've done a lot of things. Um, I have a tattoo on my arm that's a lion of a lamb, and for most of my life, I just projected the line and all those different things. But now I'm a man of faith, and the lamb is what I want to project. I can call on the line if ever I need to. Mm -hmm. so don't test me, Alex. But <laughs> <laughs> I can call on I the line you. if I need to, but I, I, I want that to be subdued. I want the soft side. I want my love. I want my, my servitude. I want my faith to shine wherever I am, wherever I go. Um, so if you didn't know me, now you did. Yeah. yeah. That's, the very, core, that's the core of who I am. That's true. Very true. Um, Thank you for sharing. Yeah. If we didn't got kind of deep there for a minute. If yeah. we didn't know you. <laughs> oh, I did this yesterday, so I'll have to think of something different. <laughs> um, okay, if you really knew me, you would know that I did not think I was a creative being, and I am actually quite creative. Mm -hmm. um, if you really knew me, you would know that I have lived to please others, and that I am done with that. <laughs> 
I won't cry today. I cried yesterday. <laughs> if you really knew me, you would know that I cry almost yeah. every day. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. And I didn't used to be, but I feel like I have learned my own therapy and I've learned how to keep myself out of any pills or any other substances that people use to cope with life. And if that means I cry a little bit every day, I'm not weeping and I'm still very strong. So, so be it. Um, if you really knew me that you would know that I am deep, deep, deep in the heart of my passion right now. And I have never wanted something in my business so much as I want Passion Dallas to succeed and as much as I want it to succeed for the betterment of the good people because I think it's time that the good people win and um, I'm here to serve as Darren would say and push this um, as high as I can and it comes with a lot of fear and it does come with a lot of responsibility which I tend to put upon myself um, but uh, I'm going to push through it. So that's Great. a little bit. And I didn't cry. Yeah. <laughs> Good words. Awesome. I, I, I've said this so many times, and some of you may have heard me say it. Um, I know you have. Um, we talked about the snippets we used to have when we used to come to the gym. Mm -hmm. But it was because of you that I'm here, you know. And I'm sure this is the case for many people, too, because mm -hmm. of your heart. It's the heart of the, heart of the leader, heart of the team. Mm -hmm. It's because of you. You came to me and said, hey, I'm going to do a thing. I was like, yes. Okay, what is it? <laughs> what are you doing? Exactly. Hey, I'm going to do just a come. We're, we're going to have a meeting. Okay, I'll be okay. there. Where is it? What's this for? I mean, just because Absolutely. of who you are. So all those things that you that you share and all those things that you express and all those of uh, who you are, it's Absolutely easy to right. see. And, and, and it touches everywhere you go. Everywhere I you go, that, that light shines. Thank so, you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll say it every time, everywhere. This is a different. This is a different medium yeah. today. So <laughs> if you haven't heard it before, it you'll hear there. it again. Yeah, absolutely. Did you absolutely. enjoy this medium? Yeah, like, yeah. did yes. it feel? Did you feel the sensory deprivation that we discussed yeah, in the beginning? Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's something, and again, it's. It, this is different because a lot of you really don't know. A couple of you do, but like, this isn't a group that really knew each other. Yeah, but we were still able and managed to have such a beautiful conversation. Imagine what you could, you know, what you could keep getting out of it. So I hope that you felt that because. Yeah, thank I you, mean, everybody, for sharing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Agreed, it, was agreed. Really, and, it was really great. It's almost, yeah. I was almost therapeutic because <laughs> it's, I feel like today I really needed this. So thank you all it's been for a rough week. Yeah. It's been a rough week with yeah. the news and stuff, too. Yeah. 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 Man. No, it's so funny that you said that because that's exactly what I think it is, is therapy. Of course, it's not therapy. We're not therapists. <laughs> but, you know, the, the feeling of just feeling like you can just be real and just let it go when you walk in this room, we really... Um, um, we feel it, and so we we hope it exudes. And you can come anytime you want. So, like, well, what Alex said about relationships. I mean, this is slowly building a relationship, whether it be yes, forty five yes. minutes or whether we connect outside of it, or mm -hmm. if it's not. So the next time we get back to the next Passion Dallas event, no matter what, there's still the constant progression of discovery, whether it be forty five minutes or hour or for the rest of our lives. Right. And again, that that comes from you. Yeah. You, know, you buzz together at this table. Well. It's also interesting because it's like we are in a group just sitting here talking however in the back of my mind i'm like well we're also opening ourselves up um socially almost too yes. because we know this is going out so a lot of the stuff that we are talking kind of emotionally and internally you know it's kind of going out there and it's almost letting it's it's freeing yeah because it's letting others know it's okay yeah it well, okay. And, and like saying mm -hmm. that i don't you know i don't take risks i don't do things it's almost putting it in the back of my head saying like okay well now that that's out there maybe i need to get past this because i just put it out there you know what I, you know what i thought about when you said all that and we don't have to well you and i'll have a talk after sure. this but i want to say this now is that it's one thing to say take risks to somebody that is about taking risks, mm -hmm. but I think the whole truth is to be the essence of who you really are. Sure. You're so beautiful in who you are. You are exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. You're very kind, you're good to people, right? Like that's who you are. And there's something kind of refreshing about the fact that you're not trying to put on airs about being some risk taker and swearing like I do, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it is what it is. And I think that's what we're supposed to be doing on social media mm -hmm. is being, maybe not, maybe yeah. we're supposed to be put, being something else. No, but I, if in, in essence of developing our brand, yep. if we're trying to get people connected to us mm -hmm. and in yep. real estate, you're right, that's important. Yeah. Maybe the thing to think about is not Stacy take more risks, but Stacy be more of who you are. Mm -hmm. And even if that means that, you know, you're exactly 
perfect exactly the way you are, then I think that's 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 good enough for me. <laughs> I think risk is also you know? relative, right? Yeah, that's right. right. So it's important to make sure that if that's the journey you're on, I'm going to challenge myself to that. Is keep it relative to. I'm not right. going to jump what, out of a plane right. or anything. Right. Me but either. for other people, that's <laughs> me nothing, either. Right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. That's right. For other people, people that's easier that. than than starting a business or something. You know? <laughs> right. Like, I mean, that's a risk. We'll be faster anyway. You've yeah. taken a million risks that I know <laughs> of, but it's it's you just don't see your like. So, I, that's my yeah. point. I it's, see you as taking risks. You just maybe they're calculated risks, but. A lot it's of people relative. take cal- yeah. yeah. A, so you yeah. do. I mean, you do own your own business. There's a lot of things about you. You put yourself in a lot of positions that a lot of right. people would not. Yeah. But being here today, because it's calculated, <laughs> and you're today. forcing it, you're not <laughs> accepting that as sure. still taking the risk. Well, we all forced it. We just yeah. may not have been honest about you know, how you know he was very honest today in his fear. But like maybe the rest of us aren't being as honest as you are. So maybe that's the essence of of maybe. what it is that you're just. Exactly perfect the way you are. Yeah. Um, Seeing Carrie okay. is always a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching the Passion Dallas podcast mix up, connecting our passion leaders. Check out our YouTube channel and watch the full version. And don't forget to look out for our next episode coming soon.